We all know how important it is to move our bodies. Circle those hips! Ho! Ho! But every time I googled why it's important to take your body through its full range of motion and stretch every day, I got a different answer. And none were convincing enough to get me to stretch. That is, until now. As it turns out, if we don't move, we in some ways lose our ability to. Why? One word, fascia. When we think of stretching, we often first consider our muscles. But as we'll see in this video, many of the benefits of stretching are actually seen in our fascia. Fascia is the connective tissue threaded through every inch of our bodies. When your fascia is healthy, it's flexible, rubbery, and elastic, allowing for fluid, graceful movement and full range of motion. But when it's unhealthy, it can get sticky, thick, and literally becomes matted together. Meanwhile, your body feels tight, sore, and your ability to move is restricted, maybe even permanently. Truly, every single time I googled why it's important to stretch, I got a different and unsatisfactory answer. But then I watched three documentaries on fascia, one of which was 32 American dollars, and now I am convinced. So I'm excited to show you guys today what I found because I think you will be convinced too. But before we get into it, a big thank you to Olipop for sponsoring today's video. When Olipop reached out and I checked out their super cute website, I was so excited to give their healthier soda a try. Sorry, tonic a try. They offer six flavors in their 12 pack, classic root beer, ginger lemon, strawberry vanilla, vintage cola, and cherry vanilla. And in addition to having the cutest packaging ever, the flavors are extremely delicious and very artisanal tasting. I say artisanal because they're actually a lot better than any soda, diet, or otherwise I've ever had. The flavor is very uh, elevated. They taste like classy. <laughs> I don't have a better word for it. They taste classy and uh, I appreciate that. I like to have a diet soda every once in a while and I would happily replace that with Olipop if they ship to Canada. Even though they are a little bit more expensive, I feel that it is well worth it. Olipop doesn't contain aspartame, refined sugar, or artificial dyes, flavorings, or sweeteners. And they've added in nine grams of fiber from chicory root and artichoke inulin, which are prebiotics that feed your gut bacteria and aid with digestive health slash immune support. It's hard to choose between either of these two as my favorite flavor. Both of them are like a fancier cream soda. It is actually so good. <laughs> it's like strawberry, creamy, herbal notes. It's really good. It's very fancy. They also have a new cream school flavor that I would like to try, but I cannot. So please go and try it for me <laughs> and let me know what you think. If you're interested in trying them, click my link in the description box and use my code Kiana to get 15% off their best selling variety pack. Big thank you to Olipop for sponsoring today's video. And back to the video. Fascia is a silvery white material that is made up of a microscopic web of collagen fibers connected by fibroblasts. It surrounds and penetrates every muscle, coats every bone, inside of organs, and envelops every nerve. You can actually draw a line from any point in your body to any other point just by following the endless paths of your connective tissue. Every single organ of your body has what we call a matrix of connective tissue. It's the scaffold. It's what makes the shape of the, whatever body part you're looking at. And it's a common denominator through the entire body. Until recently, fascia was thought to be inert and lifeless. Surgeons and scientists would cut through it and discard it on their way to what they consider to be more important body parts. One such scientist, Alain Langevin of the National Institutes of Health, however, made a bizarre discovery while learning acupuncture. She noticed that as the needle was inserted into the skin, something seemed to be grabbing and pulling at it. When Langevin took these results to the lab, an MRI revealed that the collagen fibers of the fascia were actually winding themselves around the needle, like spaghetti on a fork. And what's more, the fibroblasts sent out chemical signals to the surrounding tissue, allowing it to expand and then relax. The fibroblasts that are inside the tissues, up to several centimeters away, not just only at the needle, they expand, they, they respond, it relaxes the tissue. So the research is showing that the best thing for fascia is for it to move, to stretch and not be stagnant. 
But what happens if you don't really move at all? If you're super sedentary, you haven't tried to touch your toes in a very long time, and you have body parts that haven't been through their full range of motion in a long, long while. To find out what happens when we don't move our bodies, researchers had people without injuries wear an arm cast and took scans of their fascia. Picture A shows healthy fascia prior to the experiment, while picture B shows that same fascia after just three weeks of no movement. Like an unkept garden, the collagen fibers in picture B have become overgrown. They are thicker and have literally become tangled and fused together. This unfortunate and many times painful occurrence is called fascial adhesion. Our fascia is arranged in layers, and when we move, these layers slide back and forth, gliding past one another. In healthy tissue, these layers are organized and woven into a lattice or crimp-like structure. But in unhealthy tissue, the excess collagen crosslinks and fuses in many different places. And now, instead of these layers gliding smoothly past each other as they were designed to do, they stick to each other like glue and pull and strain and tug in all different directions. The data we've obtained show quite clearly that a lack of exercise results in overproliferation of the connective tissue structures, and thus in a loss of function. It means that exercise is essential for maintaining our fascia. People who live totally sedentary lifestyles likely have these fascial adhesions thanks to a lack of movement. And even if you are exercising or generally active, you're not exempt. You could have body parts that have these adhesions due to lack of being specifically manipulated. So we have these sticky knots. And as it turns out, on top of all this, our fascia is extremely sensitive. Some scientists believe that it's even more so than our muscles are. So by not moving, things get stiff, our fascia will get dense, and our movement will be restricted a little bit until these fascial adhesions are broken down. Then if this results in pain due to the sensitivity of the fascia, we may move even less, which will compound the problem and create a vicious circle. Back pain, of all things, has been called a medical mystery despite being a very, very common problem. Patients would complain of excruciating pain, and yet spinal scans would reveal absolutely nothing wrong and treatments were equally confusing and dubiously effective. He just needs to wear this brace for a while to correct it. Interestingly, through comparing the tissue of people who suffer from back pain compared to people who don't, Langevin has shown that the difference lies in the fascia's ability to slide. In normal people, we have two layers like this, and, and, and they, can, they should be able to move by about 75% of their, of their length. Uh, when you when when the back moves and then we know that in people with back pain It's reduced to about 50% of the of the of the uh, of their length So we know that there's a reduction in the amount of of sliding that occurs between layers I'm sure most people watching this do not have back pain being that my audience is quite young But I tell you this to demonstrate that this poorly understood system of fascia clearly has an impact on our day-to-day -day lives and the way we feel along with our overall health and our ability to move, everything is connected largely by fascia that requires literal daily exercise maintenance to maintain it. Something we're just doing less and less of in our increasingly sedentary world. Too little movement can cause fascia to become so rigid and thick that it can even compress nerves and muscles. This reduces important blood, water, and nutrient flow to these areas. And water is a crucial component for fascia. Our connective tissue can contain up to 70% water. The moisture content is another important element in our ability to move smoothly and easily. If there is insufficient moisture here, the tissue becomes rough and brittle. By pressing down on the fascia firmly through massage or foam rolling and then letting go, water reserves can be replenished and exchanged like water in a sponge and the moisture of the tissue can be restored and improved. Between each layer of tissue, we find hyaluronic acid, another crucial component of fascia. Hyaluronic acid provides a lubricant for the fascia to glide over the neighboring muscle. The idea is that massage or movement realigns the collagen fibers, and fibroblasts produce fresh hyaluronic acid. New water replaces old water, enabling the fascia to slide more effectively again. So with our connective tissue in this dense, dried out, tangled state, 
blood, nutrients, and all the fluids that our body uses to function are impaired in some way. It's kind of like a traffic jam, meaning that some stuff might get there, but it might take a while, or some stuff might not get there at all. Nutrients can't get to where they're going. Immune cells can't fight their fights properly, and cellular waste can't leave the area, sometimes leading to inflammation. What these documentaries showed is that when we stretch, move, or manipulate our fascia in any way, we are helping blood and nutrient flow get into areas that it may not have been in for a long while. So what can we do to eliminate fascial adhesions and keep our fascia healthy and moving smoothly? As we've seen, the treatment is just moving around. Massage, foam rolling, acupuncture, yoga, and really any type of movement heavy lifestyle can all prevent fascial adhesions and keep tissue moist, supple, and free of inflammation. Really any type of regular movement will do. You can't tell me that that doesn't feel good because I know it does. <laughs> How about that jazzercise lady, huh? <laughs> I find all this stuff extremely motivating. This and the next video you're going to see came out of me trying to motivate myself to be more healthy. I love to know the exact reasons why it's important to do something. I need a good case and that's what these videos are. So if there's any healthy habit that you would like a case for, um, let me know in the description box and I will maybe do a deep dive on it. Also, I wasn't able to include everything that I learned in those videos, but there were some fascinating connections between fascia and things like stress, um, cancer, wound healing, really, really interesting stuff. Um, some of it was done in mice in Dr. Langevin's lab, but other researchers are finding similar findings in humans now. All the research is super, super new on this. Um, like these documentaries are like, one of them was like brand new. So pretty interesting. But yeah, I'll link all of you guys that in the description box. And if you don't already know, we have a subreddit now. So I will link it as well. Go and check it out. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. And thank you so much for watching. There's a little coffee break for you. And something that's great for those thighs as well. I'll take it to the ring. A two, a three, and a four, right? Green bean, that's a healthy thing, yeah. Woo! But what we're looking for is a coffee bean. Yeah. In the middle and a back, a back, a back. Oh, that Java sweet.